Do you ever have a day where you completely waste the entirety of that day? Well, for me, that day is today. I look stupid. I feel stupid. I've been doing stupid things all day. So let's try and find something which we can do about stupid. Let's talk about Alfred Binet. Alfred Binet was a man in France, a bloke in France, um, a French bloke, a French psychologist, and he was a sort of founding father, if you like, of IQ tests, uh, although they weren't called IQ tests then. Uh, he created the Simon Binet scale with another bloke called Simon, who we won't get into. It was mainly about Binet, lovely French guy. Uh, so the, the, the Binet-Simon scale was a test, or a series of tests, uh, for children aged 3 to 13. A series of tests getting harder and harder as you go through them. First tests being sort of following a, a beam of light or engaging conversation with someone, and harder tests being uh, naming body parts, remembering numbers, long strings of numbers, responding to difficult word problems. He made it very clear to stress that he didn't think that these tests were a, a good measure of an individual's inherited, like, definite capacity for intelligence. He, he just thought they, they were a good marker for where they were at the moment uh, in comparison to other children of different ages. So he was the first person to give us an idea of a mental age. So that's where that concept comes from. Alfred Binet, a Frenchman. Americans, that's what could go wrong. Uh, specifically, two Americans who call themselves psychologists, actually bastards. Henry H. Goddard was the first one in 1908. Henry H. Goddard translated the Simon Binet tests, the Binet-Simon tests, uh, for American schools. But instead of the, the basic premise of Binet's work, that it's just a, a way of defining where that particular individual is at the, the time, their, their current mental age, and they, they might get smarter or they might get more uh, stupid. No, they're, they're not going to get more stupid. Um, they might do, you never know. He thought that intelligence was inherited and inherent, um, and it's never going to change. It's just, you test it and that's it, that's the person's intelligence. And as such, he used it as a way of weeding out weeding out feeble-minded individuals um, for, uh, for sterilization, enforced sterilization. <sighs> mm, eugenics. Second American bastard in 1916 was Lewis Terman. Uh, not quite as much as a bastard, but he had similar ideas. He thought intelligence was something in genetic he inherited, and he used it in schools to define which curriculum children would learn, um, effectively pushing the kids at the time who did badly on the test into classes which which trained them up in vocational things uh, so that they were basically led straight from there into a life of manual labour. Hmm. What a lovely guy. <laughs>